for the Cleveland Cavaliers, don't you think? That one homeless guy. <laughs> What's up, Twitch? And welcome to Fuzzy Motion Plays Influent. This is a language learning game. I know, this isn't your grandmother's French class, but let me tell you something, it's pretty cool. Joining us today is Anthony Prusikowski, all the way from San Francisco. Anthony, how you doing? Doing well. Great to be here. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. So this is a game that uh, that you helped develop. Actually, you're best friends with the creator. Is that right? That's correct. Where did you guys uh, meet? We, we've, I've known... Uh, we went to college together, actually. We went to an art institute out here in San Francisco. Um, I, I was in the web program, and he was actually in the game art and design program. Oh, fantastic. Did you guys just, like, meet in the commuter lounge, or, you know, you <laughs> just at the same, uh, they have, like, an arcade or something, and you guys were both waiting online for the same game or something like that? Uh, well, we both had a lot of the similar interests, definitely video games involved. We hung out with a lot of the same circle of friends. Uh, and I believe we both actually lived in the same like student housing place for a while. Um, and that's originally how we, we were introduced to each other. And uh, we've just been friends since. Fantastic. Yeah, usually your first year in college, you meet like all sorts of people. I go through the list, man. I remember tons of people I, I just met out of nowhere. Make a lot of friends every oh, yeah, year. Yeah. Definitely uh, some of the most interesting people you will meet are often in colleges. All right. So before we get started, I just wanted to go ahead and uh, have you take us through what what is Influent? Influent is a language learning game. We have about uh, 10 languages right now. Uh, the basic idea behind it is uh, vocabulary based, um, and you want to associate objects with a particular language cool we've got uh at the beginning screen here you can see all these different objects and things these are also things that you can uh see and pick up and interact with in the game and we'll be getting started very shortly um there's about you said i'm, I'm sorry I, I i i can't remember off the top of my head how many different languages uh 10 right now and in the, the future we'll have more uh but 10 is what we have right now Let's see. Uh, from what I'm gathering, we've got German, which is the version we're going to be playing today. Korean, Latin, Spanish, English, Japanese, which is an interesting topic. We'll get to that later. Bulgarian, French, Mandarin, Chinese. And then also in a recent update, there has been uh, an addition of the Russian language pack, Ukrainian, Arabic, and uh, some other uh, various things to be added to those um, those language packs like I think in German you'll see there's been some grammar that's been changed around and stuff like that but uh, that's a lot yeah, we, we also have Latin which is an interesting language to, to conquer uh, and I, I just posted a link inside a chat as well for our languages on our website um, so you can see everything we currently support, what's coming soon, and what we have planned uh, later on down the line. Um, we also have a newsletter you can sign up for, and you'll be alerted when we make new changes. That's awesome. All right, guys, so check that out. That link is playinfluent.com backslash languages. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this game actually came through the, the Steam Greenlight process and also through uh, Kickstarter. Is that right? That's right. Uh, we, we asked for about was it twelve thousand dollars originally on Kickstarter, and we made about thirty thousand. So we went way over our goal. Um, we've met a couple of our backers at different uh, conventions. We've actually presented Influent at. It's always wonderful to actually meet the people who who believed in you before uh, you had anything to show. Sure. sure. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been been interesting, uh, and, the, and the green light process was definitely. Uh, an interesting adventure as well. We, we got, you know, about 9,000 people or so uh, interested in our project. That's fantastic. And it just kind of came off of, hey guys, we're making a game based off of language learning. Would you like to support us? And you got that much support just off of that. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, we, uh, people who are interested in languages are usually a small but passionate group. So we definitely, uh, 
you know, got a lot of uh, support through different people. And we also get a support through like different educational systems. We definitely try to target uh, like school systems or even uh, whole government systems. We have some contact with a couple different um, embassy groups. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you definitely get more uh, more support than uh, the guy who used to play the lead in Scrubs. I uh, forget what his name is, but he was on t uh, Kickstarter asking for some money, and, and it, it just never worked out. The guy who was uh, in Garden State. Guys, help me out. Chat, what, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. You know who I'm talking about? The the lead in Garden State. Oh, it, it'll come to I know me. who you're talking about, but I don't remember his name at all. Oh, it's the worst. When someone asks you, oh, what's that guy's name? You're like, eh, I can't do it. All right, so you see here we're at the uh, <laughs> we're at the starting menu. We're gonna learn uh, Deutsch. That's the German word for German. And here we have an option. This was just put in. Uh, what we're reading here is it says Das Wort, and Das Wort means the word. Or you could just read Wort, which would be word. Um, as I explained in a previous video, there's about 16 different ways to say the word the, depending on the article of the noun you're talking about. So what we're going to come across is we're going to have the article in front of the word uh, in conjunction with the word itself, and we're going to hear the pronunciations along with that. Um, to a, a, a true German speaker, knowing the article of a word is very important. It's kind of the difference between, you know, speaking the language and then speaking the language properly. But, uh, you know, this is something you put in post, uh, post launch, which, you know, I, I commend you on because not a lot of games do that. Yeah, we, we definitely want to support our product. We, we care very deeply about it. I mean, there's only basically two of us on staff right now. Right. Um, and we have a couple other people helping us out, like by contract base for, for some deep end code as well. But I mean, there's only the two of us handling mostly almost just about everything. So, I mean, we we're a small team that's passionate about our product and we definitely we're not trying to make vaporware or anything like that or cash in and just leave. We uh, we're definitely in for the long haul. That's awesome to hear. By the way, Zach Braff was the gentleman I was talking about who made a Kickstarter uh, campaign and got less money. <laughs> Zach Braff, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click begin. There is a little bit of a, a backstory to all this, so we're going to go ahead and let that play out. So I'll shut up and so you guys can hear what the uh, the story is to all this. It's the, the story of the Sanji Genshi 10. Did I say that right? Sanji yes. Genshi 10? Awesome. I, I struggled with that for a little bit. But okay, here we go. We're hitting the begin button. Hey, Firestarter. My name is Andrew Cross, and I'm an independent inventor. Recently, I developed an awesome handheld language learning device known as the Sanji Genji 10. I brought my prototype to a major technology corporation, and things were really taking off. That is, until somebody stole it! <laughs> <clears throat> but that's okay, because I'm here to prove the Sanji Genji 10 is my invention, and I need your help. Over the course of this campaign, I will demonstrate the effectiveness of my device. And to do so, I hereby vow that I will learn 100 words. Wait, make that 200. No, 300 words in a foreign language. Don't you make me go to four. As I learn, you can follow me right here on Firestarter. Join me as I learn my first few words right now. My device can scan real-world objects using state-of-the-art technology that only I understand. It can then determine the name of that object and teach anyone how to say it in any language. But more importantly, my device even saves vocab lists, allowing those seeking mastery of a language to challenge themselves. If we manage to raise more than enough to cover all the lawyer fees, as a stretch goal, I'll even develop a remote control spaceship that works in conjunction with the device. It'll have a sweet paint job and ion engines and and lasers! Yeah! As I was saying, I love that. I'm confident that the Sanji Genji 10 will change the world as we know it. Everyone loves the lasers. I hope you're with me. That was a great touch, I gotta admit. Alright, so there was a lot thrown at us. Let's go ahead and try to make sense of what's happening here as soon as the game starts up. I, I gotta F fun little fact, that's actually our uh, developer Rob, that's uh, his voice as well. I, I was just about to ask that. Were these character models modeled out of fair to one in uh, particular? And it's good to know. Okay. So, welcome to Influence. Hi, my name is Chip, and I'll be your guide. Follow me over here. Let's go 
ahead and take a look. Hey, this is the hint box. Hide or show this with F1 or hit exclamation box above. So there's a lot of things that the uh, Sanji Genshin 10 wants us to know. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and... We Click we do things. get a lot of criticism for the tutorial, uh, so that's definitely something that we are aware of that it's not the most contextual. So it's definitely something we're looking into updating uh, within a future patch also. Oh yeah, I, I'm not trying to skip through all this stuff. I mean, a lot of this stuff I know and I, I think it, it would be best for us to kind of explore. Um, oh, we can crouch. I guess I should have read through some of these. <laughs> um, but. Uh, you can read through these and you can see, uh, you can kind of press some of the buttons. One of the things, I mean, first things anybody does when they play video games, they press all the buttons that they possibly can to see what they all do. Um, right here we have a to-do list and we access that by hitting the E button. And you'll see that we're going to look up a lot of these words in the hopes of being able to find them in a time attack or uh, master them as time goes on. And, and I'll show you how that all works. Uh, let's see. So your uh, mission objective is to add 10 words to your vocab list to unlock time attack mode. Uh, every 10 words forms a new list. Okay. Uh, do, do, test modes, hotkeys. Okay, so we have hotkeys, R and F uh, to talk between modes. We can crouch. Uh, use control left click to access child objects. Oh, that's something I didn't know before. Try double clicking uh, as well. See, the thing is... And, and, and this is not a criticism, it's just kind of like something that, that, that I go through as a gamer. Like, I have uh, my, my memory, you know, it's hard for me to remember things. So, if we can access this um, in the menu, that would be fantastic because then I could like, go back and kind of make sense of all this stuff. But you know what? You can actually keep this up. You don't need to worry about, okay, so we can just, yeah. We, we don't need to, like, let it go. We can actually... Yeah, I mean, I, we always appreciate uh, constructive feedback. Yeah, I, again, you know, I'm just, I'm excited to play the game and I just wanted to kind of run through. So what you're looking at right now, folks, this is uh, in an apartment of our main character modeled after the creator of the game. Oh, I clicked on something and we heard the pronunciation. Uh, I'm looking around with the mouse just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Let me go ahead and hit the control button. Oh, wait, I'm hitting control and it's, wait, was it? No, it was shift. Okay, so now we can kind of get down and see what's happening here. Now the idea is you can, you're just kind of dropped into a bedroom, you know, and and the first thing you think of is, imagine if you were dropped into a foreign country, you just want to go around and be like, what's this? How do you say this? What, what, what's this? Como se dice? Wie man sagt? Auf Deutsch, right? We would say, you know, what's this over here? Uh, this is the wall. Wand. Auf Deutsch, we say die Wand. Uh, let's go ahead and... I, I, I want to stop talking about the game. I want to give you a chance to talk about the game, uh, Anthony. So uh, what are we looking at? Well, let me give you a little context here. Yeah, our, sure. our main developer um, you know, was here in San Francisco, and then he moved actually to Japan. And he was a native English speaker. He didn't know Japanese at the time at all. So while he was struggling to learn a new language, being immersed in this new culture, he was in his apartment, and he covered every single thing in his house with flashcards and that was basically the aha moment for influent ah. so the, the idea is you know to go through and actually pick up every object and then you can actually see what how it's pronounced and and the, the nouns and verbs and adjectives to it so i mean he was doing basically the same thing in analog oh see that makes a lot of sense and then you know it kind of has that uh that real life influence to it because if you were just dropped into a foreign country and you had no idea how to speak the language. It's kind of how things would work, you know? You'd go around and you'd learn day by day, thing by thing, uh, and you'd pick up more of the intricacies as time goes on. Um, and in talking with people, they would, you know, tell you, oh, we say this instead of that. But, uh, you know, words, nouns, they stay the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and try to make a, a list real quick so we can show everybody kind of the functionality of the game. Uh, Hostel. And I double click. Oh, something just came through. What happened? Oh, what's going on? Oh, to explain, uh, Sanji Jinji Ten is a uh, 3D picture dictionary. Ah, okay. So kind of think of like a, the Pokédex from Pokémon, but it's more uh, grounded in reality, where you're able to uh, see every object. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like a yeah, like a 3D Pokédex. That makes a lot of sense. Postel. 
So we have a poster here, and the poster, um, you know, it's called Das Poster auf Deutsch, neuter. Uh, we were going to go ahead and add that to our list, and then we add that to the list, and then we're good to go there. Um, when we add 10 words to the list, that's when we get to uh, access the time attack function of the game. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some words. Hose. Hose. Uh, and while I'm doing this, um, why don't you... Do it? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us you know, who's the target audience of Influent? Like, uh, who who do you envision playing this game? Post tell. Well, we kind of wanted to target, uh, you know, people who are older and even small children. Our Bet. idea was if a small child could play Minecraft, they could right. absolutely play this game as well. Uh, so, I mean, we're targeting individuals, but we're also targeting like Bush educational Mitte. systems. Uh, we would love to have this, you know, in schools at Bish some point. Uh, we. When we were at uh, GDC uh, last month, we talked to a couple um, government Fussboden. officials as well. Uh, one of the big selling points is we have English available. So we're actually able to market to uh, foreign uh, countries and demographics and have them actually teach English to people. And that's, that's something that's vastly overlooked in, in this country because, I mean, most people speak English already. Right, right, right. So I just had a, there's a question uh, on the chat that says, is there a meaning behind Sanji Genshi Ten? Oh yeah, that was the, the 3D uh, okay. word dictionary. Oh, so uh, so that's like our, our kind of uh, translation of, you said like the 3D Pokemon, Pokedex. That would be kind of like a yeah. 3D Pokedex. There you go. So yeah, that's what the Sanji Genshi Ten is. Is, uh, is this little guy hanging out here in the uh, upper left? Is he like the Sanji Genshi Ten itself? Uh, he, he'd be like more like the, the mask guy, like almost kind of like Clippy from MS Word in a way. Oh, okay. Um, if you do, if you do, if you get tired Handy. of looking at him, you can click on that little exclamation point and it should hide him. Oh. Vant. Vant. Let's see. He, has like, he has a little, like, he, he looks like a bee. He has like a little, uh, like a little plug coming out of his, uh, his bottom side there. So, yeah, he still has got to get plugged into the wall. Handy. Did I already add handy? Okay, we did add Komode. Handy. I'm just trying to add... Oh, Komodo. I didn't get to 10 words yet. Hold on. Schlüsselring. All right. And stream, if anything's going on, you know, if there's any sort of complications or whatever, please just let me know in the chat. I am peeking at it from time to time. Uh, you know, want to make... I want this to be fun for everybody. How many more words do I have left? I have... Uh, Buch. It's an easy word. Uh, and there's also these other tabs which have adjectives Lesen. and verbs associated with playing, um, you know, the game or, or the, the, the actual uh, object that you're looking at. So, Buch. you know, this is a book. Auf Deutsch, it's called uh, Das Buch. But you can also say it's uh, an interesting book. Okay, so we could say it's interessant. So we'll add that to our vocab. Lesen. And uh, lesen, which means to read. Uh, so we would add that to our vocab. I've collected more than... 10 already. Oh, that's right. I, that already came up. So we have an opportunity to do a time attack, and this is my favorite part of the game because you get to figure out how well you can look around and, and associate what they tell you with what you remember seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit E. Uh, first 10 words. Collect 10 words. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's right. Never mind. It's... I think it's... I forget which... Um, I think I gotta get through this first, right? Do a mouse roll. I'm trying to get access to uh, the time attack. Oh, you should just be able to go to vocab on the top left, and that will give you an option to do it. Okay, that's right, that's right. Now it's coming back to me. Time attack, here we go. Let's see how well my German holds up after all these years. So at time attack, we're going to show the voice. There's going to be, uh, well, we could show hints, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it like a boss and not let that... Not let that uh, option show for right now. Waschmittel. Okay. Das Waschmittel. Das Waschmittel is down here. That's the... Uh, Fußboden. Oh, I was wrong. It, I think that's the detergent. Fußboden. That's floor. Handy. Handy. That's over here to the right. Wäschekorb. Wäschekorb. There, the Wäschekorb is the laundry basket. Poster. Poster is the poster over here. Geldbeutel. Geldbeutel. Geldbeutel is actually an interesting word. Becker. It's the marriage of two different words. Money and Beutel. I don't know what Beutel is. Hose. Uh, clock. Hose, that's down on the ground. We could crouch to see Klima that. Anlage. Klima Anlage is the word for Bet. the air conditioner. And Das Bett, that's what we're sleeping in. 
There we go. Great job. So we scored a 90%. Um, we could replay this, but uh, the cool thing about this and one of the functionalities that I really like, especially with considering that it's a... Uh, an example of mastery learning. Vant. I'm going to go back to explore for a sec, but I want to go back to this list to show you what I'm talking about is that you can go and see what word you got wrong and then immediately Waschmittel. know what it was that you got wrong. So we got the detergent wrong. I thought the detergent was actually the, um, you know, the, the laundry basket, but I, I mixed the two up. So that's kind of a neat thing that uh, especially when um, you're trying to. Yep. Also, to, to actually master a word, you need to uh, encounter it three different times and actually get that word correct within a time attack uh, in three times in a row in three separate time attacks. And then you'll get a, a star from it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and when you right. actually get a master 50 words and have 50 stars, you'll actually unlock the flyby mode, which is our, our little extra special mode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's with and the that's, ship, right? And that's where the, that's where, yeah, that's where the lasers come in. <laughs> I love it. That's really exciting. So there's a couple of Easter eggs in here that I just want to point out. If you look in uh, good old Rob's closet, you'll see that he has a Nintendo, Nintengen. Actually, we'll call that a, a Nintengen, right? That's, that's what the poster calls it because the, the other Easter egg off to the side is uh, Space Volley, and Space Volley is a Super Ninjendo. That's what it is, Super Ninjendo. That's kind of like a Star Hamster um, 64 <laughs> remake. That's a really <laughs> nice touch. I enjoy that. I See, I like finding these little things in games. It, it, that, that makes me happy. Um, so, okay. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of Easter eggs that uh, you probably won't notice the first time around. You got you to gotta really pay attention to certain things. Yeah, so we really got to get in here and, and, and look around. Um, from what I gather, your character doesn't physically interact with the objects in the room, but you can look around and kind of just point it and, and, and try to find the words and, and collect those words. Is that correct? Correct. And you can also hit tab to go into like a first person view as well. So sometimes it's a little easier to select things in that mode. Oh, you're correct on that. We see a li nice little picture over here. Now, am I supposed to gather that that's uh, Rob's significant other right there? I did. It was. Let's just say that. Uh, oh, I don't want to get like, like all like all love stories that uh, sometimes it ends in heartbreak. Let's just say that. That's OK. I, I got plenty of stories about that. I don't use their first names anymore. We come up with code names for them <laughs> for the heartbreaks that used to yeah, you. Yeah, uh, you you can't have the, the sweet without the bitter in life. Let's say that okay. we got uh, Andrew Cross, University of San Martin. Is that anybody you know? Uh, Andrew Cross is the actual content. character you're playing. Oh, oh, okay, that's right. Okay, so he puts his business card up on the. Okay, that makes sense. And then we see um, this is Bericht. a Bericht, which is a, a report, but as you can tell, that it's also not in German. It's in. It looks like it's in uh, Japanese, which is interesting. Is there yeah, a story it, originally it? the. Uh, well, originally the game was actually only going to be Japanese. That that was the original idea. Um, and then as he was developing the game, it, it just came clear to him that it had a lot more potential and he can, you know, have uh, many different languages and support them. So that's ultimately what he ended up doing. Uh, this was, we actually, he did get some funding through uh, the Japanese government while he was living in Japan uh, to produce this game on top of the, the Kickstarter um, also. Because it was a, a game produced out of Stuhl. Japan and was kind of made for uh, Japanese to begin with. Mülleimer. Yeah, absolutely. Japan, uh, Japan has a, a, that program where you can uh, teach English overseas, right? Like, they're, they're big on anything that helps their uh, citizens speak English, uh, from what I can gather. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, I think they, it's the JET program, the Jan, uh, Japanese English uh, teaching program. I know a lot of people... Uh, either personally or, you know, on YouTube that I've followed that uh, have gone through that program, enjoyed that program very much, and ended up as a result staying over there and uh, learning quite a bit about uh, the Japanese culture. Let me just pick up a few more Taschentuch. Words here. Taschentuch. <laughs> also, you can right-click on Sprudose. objects, and certain objects you can interact with, like you can open up your wardrobe or uh, open up the refrigerator, things like that. Let's do that. Let's open up our wardrobe. Oh, look at this! Oh, see, this is something I didn't... This is nice having you around. This is something I didn't know before. 
So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, what kind of what kind of things are Andrew? And there's a lot of the there's a lot of things you can open, like a lot of the drawers and uh, cabinets and things like that, so you can find a lot more objects. Deal. Yeah, that actually opens up the game quite a bit. Um, now, we've, we've walked around the apartment. Just about everything has a hilarious name on it also. Well, you know, it's funny. When I was, um, when I was doing a playthrough for, uh, through, for YouTube, um, one of the things that I, I clicked on that I thought was absolutely hilarious was this object over here. This is just um, Dunstabzugshaube. And I'll go ahead and have them uh, pronounce Dunstabzugshaube. Uh, Dunstabzugshaube. And Dunstabzugshaube uh, is just a ridiculously long word for a hood and that the hood that's over the stove and i just thought <laughs> that, that was ridiculously it's like comically oversized for what it actually translates into let's go ahead and open the fridge see what he's got in the fridge now there's a there's a question probably uh well let's just take a look at the chat here let's just see is there an option to do, 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 do? people are usually a number bad <laughs> yeah bad you know it's funny about that um the bad words thing when i was uh taking german in high school we would always ask, you know, how do you say certain things in German? You know, like, how do you say shit, you know, scheisse? How do you say um, fart, forza? How do you say slut, schlampa? And um, when we would ask our German teacher how to say certain bad things, he would very nonchalantly brush it off and say, oh, don't worry, that, that comes in the, the chapter 13, the drive-by shooting chapter. We learned about that then. So, because with all the things we would ask, he was just, yeah, yeah, that gets lumped into the, because, you know, you got your slut, she's on the, the corner, she's talking shit, and then, you know, we would always ask <laughs> about those things. But, but that shows an interest in the language, because when you want to know how to say something, it has to start somewhere. And people say, you know, they think, oh, you know, don't teach them that. Teach them what they want to know, you know, let them kind of figure out for themselves. So, like, if you're big into foods and, you know, you like Japanese foods, you like, um, you know, you want to know how to say these things in Japanese, let them see the words and explore that. Let them have the freedom to do that, as opposed to, like, a, a classroom approach, which, you know, starts at chapter one. We're going to talk about greetings. I don't want to talk about greetings. I want to talk about, I want to get into, like, you know, the, the objects that I'm, or the things that I'm interested in. Like, uh, I want to know how to say, um, you know, video games, and I want to know how to say, you know, video and, 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 and television and stuff. Let people, and I kind of think that that's important for people as far as their learning experience goes, you know what I mean? Well, I think when you're learning um, exposure or just engulfing yourself into like the culture Mayonnaise. is very important. Uh, we, we call it gamification. Mm. Essig. Uh, Rob actually has a blog called Lost in Gamification Ketchup. as well. Oh, that sounds like a link. What is it? Lost in... I can, I can link it out for you, I guess. Yeah, link it in, uh, link it in the chat so everybody can check that out. People usually learn bad words, and that's the name of the device. Sand you can't just Oh, come on now. Didn't come from that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, pronounce the words slower so that the players can uh, can easily repeat them. Well, there's something... <clears throat> excuse me. There's something uh, that I noticed when going through, um, and, and, and this is just an observation. It's not a, a, a critique or a, you know anything like that. I just noticed that some, some of the words are pronounced uh, by different people. Uh, and that you, you probably know more about that than I do, but you can tell like when there's there's a dude who pronounces uh, the word for cheese uh, Kaza? De, de Kaza, which means the cheese. He's different from the guy that uh, that pronounces most of the words in the bedroom Yeah, I mean for the most part when we record them we we're not you know, we're not doing a robot We're not doing Google Translate or something. We get a native speaker Fitzgift. who uh, can speak that language, has the proper accents and everything, because uh, those are all all important factors when you're learning a language. Uh, for some of the language, we actually had numerous people, um, just by circumstance. Sometimes one person would read, you know, half the list, then they would disappear, you know, and we'd have to find somebody else. Uh, for for the most part, we usually have one person, but a couple of the languages we have uh, two or even three people. Right. Right. Well, I, you know, that's probably helpful. I mean, that would be a long day to pronounce all those words in the booth to just sit there and go, okay, we're going to start with bed, and you're going to work your way down to all 400 and – I think it's 480 – I was reading in the achievements, like 482 different words to master, or close to 500, uh, right? uh, 420. 420. Any reason for that specific number? 
But I, I just put a uh, oh, uh, it's pretty obvious, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, there's. I just put a, the contact link in the chat as well. If you are a fluent speaker or know somebody, uh, please, you know, we, we urge you to contact us. And if you want to work with us, we would gladly put you board. in the game and have you as a voiceover as well. We, uh, we try to be very involved in the community. Yeah, that's an awesome opportunity. Guys, if you're a fluent speaker in any of the languages listed, please contact because that would be a great way and that's kind of uh, that's something else that we talked about earlier when we were talking about uh the growth of the game this is kind of like um this is a base to something that's going to be much uh larger from what i remember uh us talking about earlier i mean um what you know i guess that kind of leads into this question you know what what are the future plans for uh influence and uh you know the game itself and, and what uh you know can be released well, right now we, we just ended about a three-year development cycle. Uh, so our, our developer is taking a, a little bit of a break. Um, he has, a, a, you know, put out a couple of different patches to address some of the major, you know, bugs and other issues cool that cropped up. Um, we have, a we have like, a slowdown bug that we're definitely trying to uh, fix uh, desperately at the moment. Uh, so, I mean, bug patches are our big focus right now, trying to get this game working, you know, to the best that we can get it. We're all we're all professionists as well. Um, but then, we're, you know, we're, in the meantime, we're adding new languages. The R Russian is coming soon um, and we're working on new uh, user interface packs as well. <laughs> uh, we definitely want to release, uh, you know, as much content as we can. You hear that? Poop? So, I mean, in. And then in the in the future, we definitely want to expand it. You know, I mean, right now Andrew's a little bit of a agoraphobic. He's stuck in his apartment. Uh, that's the number one feedback that we always get is why can't he leave this apartment? Like, well, you need to have more stuff. I mean, you got to remember this was basically developed by a single person over over the past three years as a secondary job. You know, so it's a uh, it's I think it's a it's a good product for for what uh, what he's achieved. Yeah, if you, if anybody's ever played Silent Hill for the room, that's kind of the feeling that you get here. Except that that you're not locked in here by a bunch of chains. You're just locked in here by the fact that you're afraid to step outside because then everybody will know your dirty secret and that you don't know the language in which you're trying so desperately <laughs> to memorize by looking <laughs> at all of your items. <laughs> but uh, oh, can I jump? Oh, I thought I could jump for a second. I was gonna jump at this coffee table and look all around. <laughs> um, oh, there's a. <laughs> There's another word over here. This is I can't even pronounce it. This is incense. This is uh, das Räucherstäbchen. I I can't. It's, it's got two umlauts, two umlauted letters in it. Räucherstäbchen. But again, that's another comically oversized word for its English equivalent, which is just incense. But there it is. <laughs> Does um, I like I said, there's a lot of a lot of Easter eggs in here, and those are fun to find. Does the game have any? Uh, direct or indirect influences, like either whether it comes to art design or just in design in general, or, or any of those things. Uh, I mean, we we have a, you know a couple different commentaries on the game industry. Like if you look on the bookshelf, we have a an interesting game there called like War Propaganda Three, which is definitely a, a prod at the the Call Steck of Duty series, um, and you know the typical uh, climate of our politics at the moment. Uh, we, we definitely have a lot of uh, anime influences in here. Uh, definitely a lot of different video game influences. Uh, technology as well. Like it, uh, For example, an Easter egg is if you open up the laptop and look at it, it has a Reddit uh, Easter egg. Oh, um, that is awesome. You can, also, uh, you can also turn on the television and it will give you a uh, kind of like a commentary on Kickstarter a little bit. Laptop. Dude, I mean, the, the, if you, if you picked up at the beginning, uh, uh, there it is. Yeah, if you, if you picked up at the beginning, uh, the whole Firestarter thing is kind of a meta shout out to uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. I was thinking about that uh, Firestarter, absolutely with Sanji Genshin. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Has uh, has anybody from Kickstarter kind of come back and said like, hey, thanks for the thanks for the shout out. You know, we saw the game, we saw that you know we're kind of in the game as as part of it. Uh, no one from officially from uh, Kickstarter. We haven't talked to them very much. Uh, I believe uh, Rob was at PAX East uh, last last week, um, and Kickstarter was there. So I believe he talked to them a little bit, but he he didn't fill me in uh, on that conversation. So 
But we, we do, you know, run into actual backers once in a while, and that's always awesome and very uh, interesting to talk to them. You know, we always thank them, and we're very personable. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm just answering some of the questions in the chat here. Somebody was asking, can you learn um, shorter versions of foreign words instead of the longer ones? Uh, yes, it, uh, from what we were talking about before, I think you can. Uh, some of them have... Uh, other words that they translate into, not cognates, but uh, uh, just other things that they um, that they could translate into, like other synonyms, I guess you could call it. Uh, let's take a look at a word here. Uh, some some words just don't have a synonym associated with them, like das Buch, Buch. Is das Buch. You know, in German, at least from from a German perspective, from my experience, you would just call it a Buch. Um, but computer. This, com like for example, right here, we're looking at uh, der Computer. Uh, and der Computer is like a borrowed word from English, because especially in ja uh, in German, I was going to say Japanese, I, I know nothing about Japanese, I'm not the uh, expert on that, but uh, especially in German and a lot of European countries, a lot of newer technology that comes from, you know, the West, from America, those words get imported into their language. So especially for something like a computer, which, you know, wasn't around in Germany, especially when the, the language was concept uh, conceived, you know, that, that word either needs to be uh, translated, or if there is no translation, they'll just borrow one of the uh, English words. So, you know, the computer becomes der Computer. Uh, or it could be called uh, der Rechner, but I've never heard that word used before. But you can choose to Rechner. make that the first thing you go for. So instead of uh, doing a time attack with der Computer, now you can search for der Rechner. Although it's kind of like it's a synonym, at least in my opinion, I don't think a lot of Germans would use, but it, you know, it, it broadens your vocabulary. It gives you more things to say instead of just saying, uh, you know, the computer all the time. Uh, you know, and, and Anthony, by, by all means, if you have anything to add, please don't feel afraid to, to cut me off. I, I, you know, I know people are sick of hearing my voice. I just kind of looking around here. Um, I love the first person mode. Oh, yeah. I mean, also, one of the um, criticisms we often get is people say there's too many borrowed words. And I'm like, well, that's kind of how it is with the language. I mean, that's not it's not necessarily us trying to cop out or something. That's just how the actual language is. Right. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, one of the one of the interesting things I uh, I called Rob on earlier was there's, you know, there's that cat in the on the chair. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but. There's no litter box or food or water out for this cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, you got, we got to release like an expansion to have like the litter box expansion. <laughs> oh, you know, just like every other cat just shits where it wants, probably in the Vesha Corp over here, or maybe, you know, does its business somewhere we don't know behind the couch. Or can we move the couch and see? Yeah. I bet you if we were able to move the couch, we'd be able to see like a bunch of sh uh, cat shit back here and notice that there was an awful smell. Of course, he doesn't notice yeah. because, you know, he's in the house the whole time. <laughs> you know? Um, so, all right, we talked about a lot of those things. <laughs> this is pretty cool. What's this? Choco crusted crispy clusters. Frühstücksflocken. Frühstück. Frühstückflocken. Um, there's a there was a story that my German teacher told me when I was in high school about a trip that they had taken to Germany. Uh, and Germany, if you don't know, is, is a lot of inspiration for some of the uh, the Disney cat, like the Disney Castle, the one that you see from Walt Disney. That was um, modeled after uh, a famous German uh, German castle, the name of which I, I can't remember. It escapes me, but I know exactly what it looks like. However, there's a table inside, and that table's you know more than. Uh, like I, I want to say a thousand years old, you know, and, and they don't let people sit at it. Obviously, it was there for, you know, uh, medieval times when kings and queens would sit at it and have their discussions and whatnot. So one of the kids, being the American uh, assholes that they are, kind of uh, walked in and early in the morning before they leave, they they <laughs> they got their friends together and they banged on the table and they were like, wir wollen Frühstück, which means, uh, you know, in German it means uh, we want breakfast. And then the curator came down and what are you doing? Oh my God! <laughs> like, get the hell out of here! <laughs> That's the only reason I remember that that word. But yeah, if you're learning that for the first time, Frühstück, you're like, what the hell? Like, it just looks so odd to say. But some words resonate with you just a little bit more. Or maybe you'd like to say the word underneath. That's probably a lot easier. Müsli. Uh, <laughs> you you can also uh, right click on the door in the bedroom and go into the bathroom, and there's some other objects in there too. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think of that i was sitting here thinking yeah there's this door that you can't go into yeah sitting here we haven't even oh look at 
look at all this. See, now this is this is part of the game that I didn't even get to explore. Can we see her? Oh, we see ourselves. That's awesome. Let's see what's in the medicine cabinet. Usually you can tell a lot about a person what, by what's in their medicine cabinet. Any herpes uh, cream or stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the deodorant has some, an interesting name as well as, uh, I think, the moisturizer. Yeah. <laughs> what is, what's this over here? Stay away. Is that like bug cleaner? Let's see. Raumspray. Air freshener. Das Raumspray. Okay, das Raumspray. That's cool. Uh, shredder. Again, another uh, Easter egg or callback to... Um, what Rob does, or, or kind of one of Rob's passions now that he's in uh, Japan. Actually, you told me that he had a, a big um, doing with uh, skate decks. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah, he runs. He helps co-manage a store called Mint, uh, which is a, a skate shop out in Japan. So yeah, he's uh, he's definitely uh, been in skateboarding a long time. He can uh, he can do some good tricks. He'll post some uh, good videos once in a while. It's always interesting. And it's it's definitely interesting out out in Japan compared to, compared to America. You know, America is very much, you know, like the, the cops will beat you up or or take your board or you know they have skate stops everywhere. In Japan, they don't they don't have any of that. They don't really have that culture as much. So it's a much smaller, dedicated bunch of kids that are into skating. And if the police actually do show up, they're they're just, the Japanese police. They're actually really nice. They're just like, can you please stop doing that? And, and they're just going to keep on asking you. They're not going to do anything about it, really. So it's uh, it's uh, it's interesting to say the least. Right. Zypha. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> the soap just says clean. Is that Zypha. What I'm supposed to do, or is that uh, what the soap is? De Zypha. Uh, it's a feminine word. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's over here. This is uh, let's see hair boom. Yeah, I could use some of that. Haarwaschmittel. Uh, das Haarwaschmittel. So okay. Here's an example of where you start to make connections with things, right? Because we knew that the, um, the, uh, oh, if I could just get out of this. Okay, here we go. If I could just get out of here. Uh, the detergent was called Waschmittel, right? And then you go back over here and you start to realize, oh, yeah, this is called Waschmittel. So it's like, oh, so anything that's like kind of like a cleaning product or, or something like that, it probably has a, 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 a like a root in a in a Waschmittel sort of thing. So maybe like a like a detergent for cleaning the the dishes has like you know like dish Waschmittel or something. And you start to pick those things up and put them together. Haarsprühung. Oh wait, there was another Haarwaschmittel. Shampoo. Da shampoo. Okay, well I guess that kind of takes all the thunder out of what I was saying. But <laughs> we turn. Well, also if you notice while you're looking at certain objects, you'll see a little magnifying glass in the bottom left corner, yeah. and that. That is uh, signifying you can actually zoom in with your uh, mouse wheel. If you scroll it up and down, you should be able to zoom in to the object and you'll be able to actually read certain things. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so we can see. Okay, so that makes that a little bit easier to see. Oh. Also, it seems like you found one of the hardest words to find in the game is uh, water, actually, because you have to turn on the faucet and then you can click on the water. And that's one of the most overlooked things in the game. Like, I mean, part of the, the fun of the game is searching for all of these different words, and you probably get to a point where you think you found everything, and then Wasser. there's this. Das Wasser. Oh, that's so weird. I would have never found that. If you had not told me that, I would have been like, yeah, I thought I found everything. I'm, I'm yeah, calling it in. Then the, the other one that people usually miss is the fan um, in, the, in the living room. Uh, you can actually get the fan, but then you can actually get the fan blades itself. And people usually miss those. Oh, that might be Zimmerdecke. Really Zimmerdecke. Oh, uh, no, yeah, because you gotta. Time. Yeah, you, you actually have to time it when because it, it's spinning. Because yeah, most of the time people will just select the ceiling and think they got it. Yeah, I would. And uh, had you and that's also that one of the ones with uh, the child objects. So you actually have to, since you're on a Mac, you have to hold down uh, Command uh, to select the actual child object too for the blades. you've been doing on this couch oh my <laughs> genghis khan super potato 3d <laughs> did you, did there, you there, guys... there's a there's a couple uh, potato references in here <laughs> did you guys think of these yourselves like did you come up with those and were like well we need to come up with the name for a game that we're going to put in the game what are we going to call it 
Yeah, I mean, he came out with, with a lot of those. I mean, there's a lot of weird, random references he, he, he came up with. Um, and if you can't tell by that book as well, he's a, our developer is a very big um, Metal Gear fan. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's a classic. Everybody loves that game. Let's see, what, what is this? Oh, it's the Stingray. See, I never would have gotten that if, if it hadn't been for that trick you taught me with the, uh, the scroll button. But then also... I probably should have known that if I were a little bit more patient and just sat there to read the uh, intro. <laughs> I guess my impatience is kind of, uh, kind of... Can you actually read that text? You can. Small... Well, kind of. Oh, wow. Well, and actually, that that stingway next to the television is the exact one that you f take uh, control of after you unlock uh, you 50 stars. So you actually you start right there next to the television and take off and can fly Ooh, around the apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the Sanji Genji 10, the world is your own personal dictionary. Who? Me? Just point the device at the desired object, press the button, and voila! Featuring native pronunciation, synonyms with swap functionality, and the freedom to learn at your own pace. And that's not all. The Sanji Genji 10 is perfect for vocab acquisition and pronunciation using state-of-the-art technology that even we don't understand. The device remembers new objects and their locations, allowing you to test your knowledge against the clock. Correct answers can Another good uh, Easter egg if you actually look at the name of the vacuum cleaner too. Track your progress uh, with the vocab menu down on the actual special task like, foot to part of it. More challenges. The Sanja Genjita was developed entirely by Technical Ministries. Uh, in the closet. From anyone, especially this man, so if you ever see him, he's definitely lying. But wait, order now and receive a one-year <laughs> subscription to Technical. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> Sucks that. Well, let's see. Oh, wait, I, if I remember correctly, this is a weird word. Stolpsauger. Uh, no, Stolpsauger. Okay, that's not that, that crazy. It's just, well, that's kind of what it means. It means like a uh, rug sucker. Or vac... It... <laughs> Zaugen is the German word for suck, but Staub, I think, is um, the German word for clean. Staubsauger. If memory serves me correctly. Any German, any, any, you know, German speakers, native German speakers in the uh, the audience in the, the chat, please go easy on me. It's been a while since I've, I've studied German. Lieden. For real, like hardcore. I, I haven't studied German uh, like in a classroom sense, or at least that way since my freshman year in college and I've been out of college for uh, quite some time since 2003 yeah it's been 10 years since that, that freshman year so we got fence delayed in here you can change this to uh die ja los Leusen. jalousien okay lines what else do we have here oh the guitar can you play it no it's not it doesn't look like it does propaganda yeah like you're playing Q oh the other and there's a there's Oof. another a uh, another Easter egg for potatoes. If you look in the cupboard uh, next to the, the left of the refrigerator, there's a one of the drawers you open up has a book about potatoes. Okay. That's funny. Oh man, it's an Irish household. One hundred thirty-five thousand ways to cook a potato. Poor man's guide to an exciting world of an Irish cuisine. Finley, <laughs> that's funny. See, oh, we were talking about uh, JRPGs. There's definitely a Final Fantasy uh, uh, Easter oh, egg in where? here too. Where? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I believe. What, I, give, give me a hint. Give me a hint, and I'm gonna see if I can find it. Uh, living room. Okay. All right. I think I know, because I haven't come across this, but I, I did not look through these cabinets. Oh, no, nothing. The stapler. I don't think that's anything to do with Final Fantasy. Wait, Rob? What did I say? Rob Hallett in the statement. Oh, that's that's the developer, isn't it? That's the that's the yeah, developer. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's making a reference to that uh, South Park joke. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's see. Oh yeah. Rob, Rob Schneider is a stapler. Is the stapler <laughs> coming soon to a theater near you? Let's see. I, I'm not sure why he picked potatoes. Maybe it's a uh, of reference to uh, to consoles, but uh, I can't be sure. <laughs> <laughs> How many foreign words can we learn in the apartment? 420. No joke. <laughs> so I think for the for the, just the sake of that, April 20th is coming up, and it's right around the corner. Everybody, you should de definitely get a copy of this game. Which brings me to the giveaways. Hey. 
We haven't even talked about these yet. We've been so in interested in looking around the apartment, especially since I, I learned that you can use the right click button to open things except for the window, so our freedom is not a word that we can <laughs> learn. But we, we could talk about giveaways. So, okay. <laughs> On Twitter, there is a page for Influent, and if I'm not mistaken, let me just go ahead and double check what that is. I believe that is Play Influence. Okay. So, I'm going Did to... Did I just put a link in the chat? Okay, I'm going to pick... Absolutely, there is a giveaway. Yep, you better believe it, bud. We've got about five or six uh, press keys to give away. And if you have Steam, this is what this means. You get a copy of the game that's uninhibited. So instead of having to pick a language and stick with that language, you can play through any of the languages you want. You can try Spanish for a little bit. Don't like that? Try the Japanese. That's not tickling your fancy? Try the German one. You'll find that the German one's very similar to English in some senses, but then in others it's, you know, like ridiculously long. And I'm, you wouldn't have thought of that word even if you had a gun to your head. So here's what we'll do. For the first giveaway, I'll be giving away a key for anybody that is uh, subscribed to uh, Play Influence. So at Play Influence. Go check that out. There's a link in the... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, in the description, and then also make sure that you're subscribed to uh, myself if you're following me, so follow Play Influent and then follow myself uh, at Fuzzy Motion and at uh, Play Influent. I'll be picking that randomly in about a couple of minutes here, so here we go. Uh, at Fuzzy Motion. And at Play Influent. Okay. So if you're subscribed to those two things, all right, uh, the first thing that's on my uh, Twitter, you'll see is a, uh, actually it's the second thing down, it says come play Influent, retweet that and be subscribed to the two of us and you'll get yourself a free CD key for um, downloading this on Steam, okay, and I'll DM you that in about two minutes. Now while we're waiting for that time to go through and letting people uh, go ahead and find us on Twitter, uh, let's just go ahead and look uh, around some other things while... Uh, we talk just about like kind of uh, the implications, I guess, of uh, influence. Um, what what do you think the goal of a game like this is? Uh, do you think this is uh, a competitor to Rosetta Stone, or do you think this is more of a, a sort of game like uh, uh, like uh, the memory games that you play on your Nintendo DS or anything like that? It, it, what is what are we shooting for? I'd say a little bit of both. I mean, we we definitely want to get you started. I mean, we don't teach you the grammar or syntax. Um, that's definitely something we're looking into in the future, but since we have so many languages, Chocolate. it's very difficult to manage all every language's own rule set um, within the game. Uh, I mean, especially since we only have a, basically one developer, that's that's a lot of work. Uh, but Shunk. we definitely want you know to give you a good grasp. If you learn about like a thousand words you should be able to kind of pick up a language from there. So we definitely want to add more words as time goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we, th that's basically like our, our, our road plan here. I mean, we want to, we want to teach you a good base, uh, get you interested in the language. Uh, if, if you continue learning, you know, the outside of the game, that's great. But I mean, we really wanted to focus on the, the gamification of learning. So you're able to learn something and have fun while you're doing it as well. I mean, I, and I think that especially if, you know, my generation, like the Nintendo generation, generation, quote unquote, uh, we we're very comfortable with games and we're very uncomfortable with that environment. So, I mean, it's only natural that we want to learn and interact with any 3D environment. I mean, it, it just kind of makes sense. Uh, I, I feel that. You know, I I personally learn a little bit better if it's it's more engaging, if it's it's testing me in some kind of game type way, then uh, I will definitely learn it and retain that information much more than just you know reading it in a book or auditorily uh, listening to somebody tell me this. All right, I you know I, I kind of see this, you know, because I come from an educational background um, myself and. I kind of see this as a great way uh, to supplement what happens in a classroom to kind of reinforce because, you know, like you said, we do come from an age where we're comfortable with video games. You know, I think back to when I was in fourth grade and uh, there was a game, a very simple game on uh, Macintosh 
called like Math Muncher, right? And if you got all your time oh, yeah. correct, you could play Math Muncher. Are you familiar with that game? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, 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 I mean, it be... Math Munchers and what was it? Oregon Trail was like the the two big like Ooh. gamification educational Into games the sun. Uh, growing up. Yeah, I, I, it would, it, my teacher used to use it as a as a way to uh, like a like a treat to hold over a head. Like, hey, you do your work today, you get to play math. Muncher. Right, an award so, system. It was just so much fun, you know, to do. So I kind of see this as a way, like, especially in a classroom where, you know, you read grammar, you, uh, you talk about things, you have, like, dialogues and whatnot, and you say, okay, you know, we get through all of our work today, you can go over to uh, the computer lab and play Influent for about 30 minutes, and, you know, you put on your headphones or you listen. Oh, wait, I saw it. I saw it. There it is. Final, fi wait a second. Final, f first reality seven. And it's got the yeah. Final <laughs> Fantasy X background. Oh, I found you. I got you now. <laughs> but uh but like you know that that this would be a great tool for kids like that in that scenario in that situation to kind of use and then reinforce what they've learned in class so you know aside from hearing the teacher say it them reading it now they're finding it in the house and exploring and they're like oh wait i know what that's called or maybe they're curious like oh i play guitar and we've you know, never had an instance to talk about a guitar in class, but I'm curious to see what a guitar is called in German. Guitar. You know, that could be that supplement that some people are kind of missing out on because, you know, especially when you're teaching, um, you look for things that work, but then you don't want to go too far out of your comfort zone. And I know a German teacher specifically that I'm thinking of, uh, you know, we just call her Frau, but uh, she's a very good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, she's, she's uh, not part of the Nintendo generation. So she feels kind of reluctant to try things with technology but i think for people like her and for people that fall into that scenario this would be a great thing that you can introduce to the kids and just let them kind of explore it you don't have to do much you know just let them play around and figure things out for themselves especially when it comes to vocab and then maybe there's things that they want to ask their teacher about like hey what's this called you know or or how would you say i play the guitar you know you say ich spiele Gitarre, but that's something they could ask their teacher after finding it here in the house No, absolutely, and that's that's definitely our our goal in mind. You know, we we want to uh, spark that interest. You know, Bush of picking. learning. I mean, I think Bush that picking. you you should always be Bush learning picking. throughout your life, and uh, this is definitely a good uh, way to supplement that. Okay, Let me just take a look at Twitter. <laughs> All right. Twitter from my phone in case you guys are curious. Okay. First winner of an influence CD key is Dana Young 211. Dana, congratulations, you won yourself a CD key. I'll send that to you in the PM box. Make sure to check that. Uh, it's gonna take me a little bit to go ahead and type all that in, but uh, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, so and, and, and Andrew was nice enough to give me, you know, quite a few of them, so, you know, please trust me, there's plenty more where that came from. Uh, don't think that, you know, you lost your opportunity or anything like that. Uh, let me just go ahead and type this in. While I'm typing this in... This is uh, also a Steam key. You need to have Steam uh, to redeem it, and it will work on PC, Mac, and Linux. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to reset the stream for just a little bit because I'm getting some some feedback over here. Um, in about five minutes, guys, we're gonna be right back where we were, uh, and we're gonna be talking to uh, Andrew more about Influent, more about the uh, the game that you're seeing right now. There's plenty of stuff to talk about, so don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be right back.